Sustainable forest management ensures that our forests and the water, fish, wildlife, soil, and watershed values supported by them are well cared for today and in the future. Sometimes people disagree on how sustainability is defined when it comes to managing Idaho's forests. A new definition has emerged, however, that rings true. Dan Miller, a professional forester, explains. Envision these three things as three circles. You've got an economic circle, a social circle, and an ecological circle. And where we wind up with true sustainability is where all three of those circles overlap. It makes sense from an ecological standpoint, it's economical, and it's also socially acceptable to the public. If you turn the clock back a hundred years, uh, the social thing was jobs, you know, let's, let's build a sawmill, let's start logging, let's put some people to work. Well, times have changed, and there's a huge demand now for recreational resource that previously was very small, so that circle gets bigger. From an ecological standpoint, trees will grow on healthy, well-managed lands. Now the ecology and what we can do hasn't changed a lot. We've seen how these forests work for the past hundred years and we can make much more informed decisions as far as selecting forest management options. And then there is the economic circle. If you're in commercial stand forestry, for instance, do they pay? Or if you're in government forestry, do we have the budgets to do these sorts of things? The Idaho Forest Practices Act makes renewability and sustainability a legal responsibility on all private and state forest lands. The rules goals are to make sure we protect soil resources, water quality resources, as well as forest productivity in the state while we're sustainably harvesting timber and performing other forest practices on the lands. The Idaho Forest Practices Act also ensures that Idaho's forests are renewable with specific provisions for replanting or regenerating forests after harvest. If it's harvested below a certain minimum stocking level, they are by law required to reforest that property ultimately within five years of the harvesting operation. IDL's private forestry specialists do spot checks on logging projects throughout the state on a regular basis to ensure compliance with the Forest Practices Act. In addition, third-party audits are conducted by the Idaho Department of Environmental Quality on state and private lands to ensure compliance with the Act. The audits typically find a compliance rate of about 97 percent. Private forest landowners are required to comply with the Idaho Forest Practices Act. Small private forest landowners also have the option of certifying their forestry activities through the American Tree Farm System. Steve and Janet Funk of Wolf Lodge, Idaho, were honored in 2011 as the National Outstanding Tree Farmers of the Year for sustainably managing their 369-acre forest for 25-plus years. It provides uh, an outlet for people to come out here especially our school children, to learn where sustainable forestry practices help our water, our wildlife in that environment. The global market for lumber now puts a premium on forest products that are raised in a sustainable way. The advent of forest certification programs provide an official seal for labeling forest products that have been produced sustainably. Two entities, the Sustainable Forest Initiative and the Forest Stewardship Council provides a sustainability seal for the majority of certified wood products and private forest lands in the U.S. Before a stick of lumber can receive the seal, third-party auditors do a thorough background check on forest management activities and more. The idea is, is that the end consumer, the user of these forest products, has assurances that their wood-based product come from a well-managed forest. We're looking at what's growing in the forest, we're looking at wildlife habitat protection, we're looking at water quality protection. Is it sustainably managed over time and space? There's also a number of social components with, with each standard that deal with using trained, qualified, certified loggers. Public input is very important. Input from adjacent neighbors, uh, indigenous people's rights and workers' rights. Companies like Idaho Forest Group sell certified lumber to expand their market share. They do so on a voluntary basis at their expense to achieve a higher standard. 
we were able to sell our lumber to people and we can guarantee that it's coming from sustainable management of timberland and that becomes a very important part of marketing the home depots and the lulls of the world they want to be buying their lumber from people that can certify that it has this green sticker to it forest certification is important for selling in the global market as well people overseas that buy a lot of our product they require that uh, we can certify our lumber. They wouldn't do business with it if, if we didn't. The concept of sustainability has been more difficult to define on national forest lands. The U.S. Forest Service has a broad mandate to manage for a multiplicity of public interests compared to private and state lands in Idaho. Over the last 15 years, environmental groups have disagreed with timber industry groups and others about how much timber should be harvested on national forest lands. Timber harvest levels plummeted as appeals and lawsuits stopped timber sales. It's come to the point now where it's pretty much come to a standstill. To get past the gridlock, various public interest groups have joined together to form collaborative groups to focus on the future management of national forest lands. The groups have the support of the U.S. Congress. Collaboration is, is kind of the way we are going to find some balance between all the competing interests. Uh, whether it's conservation, timber, recreation, getting together face to face, building some trust, and trying to find some common goals on a forest. That's what's going to work. It's a slow, arduous process that uh, can be very difficult at times, but you get to meet some people and you get to understand their, their points of view and hopefully you can somehow package that, put that together, and you can come up with projects that um, meet the needs of everybody at the table. Liz Johnson Gebhardt of Priest River wants to see results. Collaboration is like the three shuns. You have to have a communication, you have to have action, and you have to have implementation. And otherwise, you can communicate forever, but if you don't actually get something done and implement it and put it on the ground, it's probably not a true collaboration. Congress is beginning to allocate significant funding to forest management, wildlife enhancement, water quality and recreation projects in national forests in Idaho. Those projects show that diverse public interest groups are finding agreement where they couldn't find agreement before. We're just not managing trees for boards, we're managing trees for wildlife, watershed, recreation, visuals, uh, a whole suite of other resources. Whether sustainability is found through collaborative groups, the Idaho Forest Practices Act, or forest certification programs, it appears that the social part of the equation may be less divisive than it was before. And perhaps that's because people are realizing that sustainable forest management will occur in the sweet spot where projects are ecologically sound, economically viable, and socially desirable.